Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, top health officials set to meet with Pfizer today to discuss another possible round of COVID-19 vaccinations. And protests in Cuba, the country is going through its worst economic crisis in decades as thousands of Cubans march in Havana to protest food shortages and high prices. Outside with live cam this morning, uh, I started to notice that Saharan dust moving into the area yesterday. Mike says overall things are going to start to feel a little bit more July like around here. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is July 12th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you had a great weekend. You as well. It was stormy for at least the first part of the weekend, and then things got a little bit better. Yesterday, I actually saw blue sky as we yeah. headed into last night. Yeah, it was, it was very nice, and then a lot of pictures, and it's funny because you were talking about that uh, dust. A lot of folks have sunset pictures, and they're, you know, very hazy and orangey looking and everything, and so that's the thing. Yeah, we're starting to see, you know, some of that come on in here, and it's not going to feel, I mean, it feels like <laughs> July and then some this morning. The humidity is just off the charts uh, when you walk outside this morning. And temperatures, though, will still be held in check. We'll still be a little bit below normal later on today. More on that coming up in a second. 78 right now in town, 80 at Stinson. These are the actual air temperatures right now. Then you factor in the humidity and those dew points. Look at that mid and upper 70s and all the moisture in the ground is adding to this. And so that's why we have heat index readings right now. 86 at Stinson, 81 out there at the airport. It feels like 84 in Castroville. And there are actually a couple of showers well up north in the hill country. There's, believe it or not, a technically it's a cool front, but it's not going to be blasting on through here. But that's just enough to touch off some of those showers uh, in portions of the hill country. And uh, most are going to be, looks like, kind of dying off in the next couple of hours. I don't think we'll see anything around here today, but uh, at least a couple of more showers up there. Mold is definitely on the high side. Updated counts going to be coming out in a couple of hours and throughout the day. We're still going to be on the cool side of things. 94 is the normal high temperature. We're at 90. Of course, there will be some humidity out there. A shower is possible later on today, although not very likely. Temperatures will start to go up and up and up a little bit more by the uh, upcoming weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. In your morning headlines today, Pfizer says it plans to meet with top U.S. health officials to discuss the drug maker's request for federal authorization of a third dose of its COVID-19 vaccine. President Joe Biden's chief medical advisor is acknowledging that it is, quote, entirely conceivable, maybe likely, end quote, that booster shots will be needed in the coming months. And while Dr. Anthony Fauci isn't ruling out the possibility, he says it's too soon for the federal government to recommend another shot. This morning, police in Haiti say they have now arrested a Haitian man who helped orchestrate President Moise's assassination. In a press conference last night, the Haitian National Police Director General said Christian Emmanuel Sanon entered the country on a private plane in June. Police say the 63-year-old was living in Florida, identifies himself as a doctor, and has accused the leaders of his homeland of corruption. According to police, Sanon was the first person the first person one of the alleged assassins called after killing Moise. Upon raiding Sanon's house, police found 20 boxes of ammunition, a rifle and pistol holders, among other items. Now, the police investigation will continue to trace how the mercenaries got to Haiti and who financed that operation. In California, firefighters working in searing heat to contain the largest wildfire in the state this year. A large part of the West continues to bake in triple digit temperatures that are expected to continue this week. A fire tornado even caught on camera while crews battle of the tenant fire, which is one of the wildfires raging across Northern California. Meanwhile, California's largest fire burning near the Nevada border north of Lake Tahoe. It grew by a third on Sunday. This morning, protests breaking out across Cuba and being supported by many Cuban Americans. Demonstrators say they are being forced to deal with food shortages and price hikes, all as our country suffers from a coronavirus crisis. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, new turmoil in Cuba. Cubans taking to the streets, protesting food and medicine shortages. The largest demonstrations in nearly three decades in a country notorious for cracking down on dissent. An economic crisis has hit the island nation hard, forcing people to wait hours in line for food and job opportunities, scarce since the pandemic. Cuba's president blames U.S. restrictions on exports, foreign funds and travel. 
Cubans across the U.S. voicing their support for the protesters. Thousands shutting down streets in Miami Sunday, many demanding American politicians intervene. I want to see the president to see something and to do something for Cuba now. We have to make sure that their message today and every day moving forward isn't lost and that the true nature of this barbaric regime is exposed. In April, Raul Castro stepped down as leader, prompting increasing calls for change in the communist nation. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 435, about 78 degrees. A big game for the Milwaukee Bucks in the game three of the NBA Finals. We're going to have a recap next in Morning Sports. Outside with live cam, let's get the week rolling. Stand by, coming up in just a bit. We're also going to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, he's going to check on one more incident for us this morning as we get things rolling. We'll be right back. In morning sports, NBA Finals resumed last night with the Milwaukee Bucks looking for their first win after dropping the first two in Phoenix. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks put on quite a show. First NBA Finals game in Milwaukee since 1974. Went to the home team in a romp. Antetokounmpo had 41 points, 13 rebounds, and six assists. He led the Bucks to pound Phoenix 120-100, cutting the Suns' lead 2-1. Bucks overwhelmed the Suns to the tune of a 22 advantage and second chance points. Meanwhile, Chris Paul had 19 points, nine assists, but the Suns got next to nothing from the teammate Devin Booker. He shot just three for 14, scoring 10. The Bucks are hoping their success will continue. NBA Finals do continue this week, starting on Wednesday. Tip-off set for 8 p.m. in Milwaukee. Then Saturday, the team shifts back to uh, Phoenix, the series rather. They'll continue next week if necessary. You can watch all those games right here on KSAT 12. Houston Astros trying to avoid a series sweep against the Yankees at home yesterday. Strohs down 7-2. Bottom of the ninth. Put your rally caps on. Chaz McCormick drills a double deep to left. Yuli Gurriel and Kyle Tucker both scored at 7-4. Next batter, Abraham Toro sends one to Right, this one's going to hit off the fence. That'll drive in McCormick. Suddenly, it's a two-run game. Uh-oh. Inning continues with two on and one out. Guess who? Jose Altuve, sayonara. This one's out of there. A day after Aaron Judge trolled him, Altuve walks off the Yanks 8-7. to seven. The whole league will be off today. The All-Star game is tomorrow night. Rangers looking to end the first half of the season on a high note against the Oakland A's. Texas down 3-0. Bottom of the fifth, Nick Solak homers the ball to gap in right center. David Dahl gets on his horse, and he will score all the way from first. That's the only run of the day for the Rangers. They fall 4-1. to one. Second half of the season begins for the Rangers Friday night when they face the Blue Jays. And I may be mispronouncing his name, but congratulations to missions pitcher Reese Nair. He was called up this week by the parent club, the San Diego Padres. Actually, he made his major league debut against the Rockies that same Friday night. Nair went three and two-thirds innings on the spot start and struck out three batters as the Padres won the game four to two. Congratulations for making it to the big show. Well, thanks to the weather, the Missions played a doubleheader yesterday. They split the uh, series with the Amarillo Sod Poodles winning 6-1 in the first game, falling 6 to nothing in the nightcap. This week, the Missions traveled down to Corpus Christi to start a new series with the Hooks. That series runs Tuesday through Sunday. And that's a look at sports. All right. Well, good luck to the Missions. Mm -hmm. Time now is 441. It's about 78 degrees out there. So ahead, a local single father shares his life's passion of music with his talented daughter. Also next, uh, some scary moments after a carnival ride malfunctions with riders on board. And welcome back. It's about 444. A carnival ride malfunctioned with riders on board, causing fear and chaos at the Michigan Cherry Festival. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, carnival ride mayhem in Michigan. Watch the terrifying moment, a pendulum ride holding nearly a dozen passenger tipping back and forth. At one point, the ride lifting from the ground as it sinks back. One ride goer described being caught in the air at that moment. I've never seen anything like shake like that. 
I've been on that type of ride before, and I can tell it's like a lot more violent. It seems a little more shaky. At one point, festival goers rushing to the attraction, holding down the ride, hoping it would slow down. The ordeal lasting only minutes. You've got to be kidding me. So how can you be sure something like this won't happen at your local carnival this summer? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll look into how carnival rides are regulated. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A local father put his musicals on hold for his daughter's future. Now his young daughter has fallen in love with both music and art. Daphne Gray talks about their journey on What's Up South Texas. Inside the bubbles. Of I want to be an artist and a singer when I grow up. Properties of matter. This is eight year old Lyric Estrada. She loves science. Got this pretty rock. But she loves art and Selena more. She has an artistic love that some may say is in her genes. I've always had a passion for music or writing poetry. Which is why her dad, 31 year old John Estrada, named her Lyric. You see, before Lyric, John wrote music and would DJ on the weekends. Once Lyric was born, I knew that it wasn't just for me anymore. And it was taking my, just myself and just focusing on her future. At first, John was fearful, especially since he and Lyric's mom separated. But having full custody of his daughter was a no-brainer. It was rough at first until I started to figure out, like, I got to beat the day before the day beats me. As a single father, John sought a strong and faith-based foundation for Lyric. He became a deputy with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to be a strong role model for her. So when she does have this man later on in the future or, or boyfriend later in the future, like long time, uh, <laughs> she's a... Uh, She's able to have a structure. Being a single dad and raising a daughter hasn't been easy. He struggled with doing her hair. Uh, like a six out of ten. <laughs> like a six? Man, I thought I was doing good. <laughs> Some homework. I don't know math. <laughs> and other things. Nevertheless. She writes me notes to uh, never give up and that I'm the best dad, so I think that helps me a lot. John still writes music and poetry, but his main focus now, his daughter's dreams. To spend more time with Lyric, John quit his job as a deputy and is in the process of starting his own trucking business. Their bond, stronger than ever with their love for God. I like him reading the Bible. And their love for each other's music, sometimes. What songs that have you heard that you really like that your dad has produced? None. <laughs> <laughs> he says he hopes his life experiences inspire her to continue reaching for the stars. You put your heart to it, you put your mind to it, you can get it. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Daphne Gray. Sounds like she could be a comedian, too, yeah, at some that's, point. Yeah, that's cool. How cute. I hope they continue to work together as, you know, she gets older. Now, I think that is a partnership that's going to last. I think so, too. Uh, we were talking to Stephen Cavazos earlier off camera, and there was a situation off 281, we think a rollover. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mark, Steph, we uh, actually just took TechSot's pages. They are reporting a rollover that came in a little bit before four this morning. Uh, but take a look here at TransGuy. We do have a little bit of an active scene out there. Some police presence right now. Let's go ahead and take a look right now as we get to the wall and show you how things are looking, if we can, <laughs> over here. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to show you the shot from right here at TransGuy. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we do have a shot over here at TransGuy where we see that we do have some police presence there. Not on the main highway there of 281, but we're seeing it right there at Bitters. Again, uh, can't really make out where that rollover is. It's tough to get a real good shot of it, uh, but they have reported that did come in just before 4 this morning. Take a look. This is right here on the maps of 281 southbound right at West Bitters Road. Still early enough to where it's not causing any impacts when it comes to that morning commute, but we are seeing that slowly improve down here off State Highway 151 westbound at Callahan Road. Now there is a little bit of residual traffic that you can see building up right over there on those lanes of 151 and uh, that has since improved over the last few minutes before we came up here. Uh, but we are spotting a little bit of the same situation here and there off US 90 westbound from Castroville Road and Suzette Avenue. Texas still reporting some high water out there near, near Leon Creek uh, or on the frontage roads that is because of uh, last week's heavy rain that we experienced. So uh, just always use caution. Doesn't look like there's anything close out there at this time. But overall, it's been shaping up to be a pretty good start to our Monday morning as we're getting the week started here. Uh, taking a look here at 281 at Bitters, where we still have this rollover crash. We'll be watching that pretty closely and seeing how it develops.
Yeah, I drove by that scene about an hour ago, and it was everywhere. They had the entire frontage road yeah. uh, underneath uh, 281 completely shut down. Looks like they're making progress, Stephen. It's good. Okay, Mike's here now. Yeah. We're talking Saharan dust. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, started, it's really going to kind of build up a little bit more today, but, you know, that kind of little bit of a glow to the sunsets especially, and this is going to be the case for probably about the next week. A little bit more of a, it says dusky, should be dusty probably on top of that sunset. This morning we are starting off with a lot of clouds around here. The humidity is just sky high. There's also a couple of showers up in parts of the hill country. There's actually, as I mentioned off the top of the show technically a bit of a front which is kind of lying north of the hill country and that's what's touching off some of these showers even a couple of thunderstorms well north of Austin some of that may linger into parts of the hill country but it looks like and as you can see right now it's kind of breaking apart and falling apart so I don't really think we're going to have to uh, deal with any of that around here this morning all the rain of course that we had is adding to the humidity factor now as far as any rain later on today uh, computer model. This one does have a shower trying to get into northern Bear County, which is a possibility, not a likelihood though. And most of that is staying well up to the northeast of us. And then uh, same situation throughout the day right along that front. That's going to be uh, the rainmaker up there. So up Fredericksburg, northern Blanco County, you may see one or two of those showers up there later on. Then as we go into the next couple of days, we are going to start to see which this model does depict some of the uh, sea breeze showers trying to come on in here. So just got it as a 20% chance for a shower or two over the next couple of days. As far as the dust is concerned, yeah, it is present and it is going to be uh, kind of sticking around throughout the rest of the day. This is a sort of a yearly thing. We get these plumes of dust coming across the trade winds over from Africa. It'll be kind of off and on at times over the rest of the week, but still sort of sticking around here. And then it looks like by the end of the week and going in toward the weekend, we should get kind of another bit of a surge of some of that dust coming on in here. So we go from rainy conditions to all this dust. Now, as far as temperatures, though, we're still going to be staying somewhat below normal throughout most of the rest of the week. Now, we've got a bunch of humidity to deal with, of course, so heat index readings are definitely going to be up there. We'll be at 86 today at noon, 90 high temperature. Normal average is 94. One or two showers, not, you know, hardly you can count them on one hand, I think, but most of that's going to be kind of those sea breeze showers. And that's going to be the case uh, for the next couple of days. Just a mention of it, not any great chances for any rain around here. And almost, I mean, you still can't rule one out going into the weekend, but it's not going to be uh, very likely at all. So we can have a, a number on it, but temperatures will start to go up somewhat. We will be getting into the mid 90s. That's July weather for the middle part of July. Lots of humidity, too. That's still going to be sticking around. Well, like a homework assignment, we put it off as long as we could. <laughs> yes, but now it's here. <laughs> Very good analogy, yes. <laughs> it's back to summer. Not, we didn't want to do the work this summer, no. and, uh, and now the deadline is here. Yep. That, that's okay. We'll power through it. Yes, we will. <laughs> All together now. 452, about 78 degrees. And coming up next, big money for Black Widow. We're going to take a look at how much Marvel's latest movie made at the box office. About five chill, a marvelous weekend for Marvel. Black Widow making big money at the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Before I was an Avenger, I made mistakes. 80 million bucks. That's how much money Marvel's Black Widow made in its weekend bow. A pandemic record opening that easily knocks F9 out of first place. The Scarlett Johansson action flick, which was initially scheduled to open in May of last year, earned another 78 million internationally and 60 million on Disney Plus Premier Access. That makes for a total weekend take of $218 million, maybe more. I'm done running from my past. Marvel Studios is owned by Disney, parent company of ABC News. Thanks and very large part to Black Widow's record-breaking bow. Total domestic box office ticket sales this weekend busted the $100 million mark for the first time since the pandemic began. $117 million total. You've got to go back to the three-day President's Day weekend 2020 to beat that mark. Tell me you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. F9 star Michelle Rodriguez is 43 Monday. And Fleetwood Max, Christine McVie is 78. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 
Now 3 till 5, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, will some people need a third dose of COVID-19 vaccine? Some health professionals say yes and some say no. We're going to check out the details. It's, uh, it's what? We're going to tell you how much a sealed copy of Mario 64 just sold for at auction. That's the head in Tech Bytes. And taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, there's that situation we were talking about earlier off 281. There was an overturned vehicle there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Delta variant is driving cases, hospitalizations, and deaths among the unvaccinated. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why health experts say getting vaccinated is the only way out. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's a humid start to your day at 78 degrees. And a bit dusty out there. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, July 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, when I stepped out uh, this morning, I was in denial at first. I forgot it was July, but then I opened the door. Yes, it is July. Mother Nature's like, we're back. Yes, definitely. Let's go over to Mike Ostrange to talk about this week's forecast. How is it shaping up, Mike? Well, very starting off very humid, and uh, temperatures are finally going to be getting back up to, I guess, what you would expect in the month of July. Now, despite, of course, all the humidity that we have around here this morning, which is helping to keep things that in cloud cover, keep things definitely on the warm side. We're about five above what you would expect this time of the year. And look at that bottom number dew point temperatures at 75, which means, yeah, there is just a ton of humidity out there. We're going to make it up to 90 today and which is on the low side of things once again. And notice how there's a very, very small chance for, you know, 20% chance a stray shower or two just because of uh, kind of the sea breeze around here. And there's also a little disturbance hanging up north of the uh, hill country. Going to show you that in a moment. The aquifer went up a big chunk, 1.3 feet on yesterday's reading. And the allergens, mole is on the high side. And I would imagine, given all the humidity, that that number is going to be going up when the uh, updated count comes out later on this morning. All right, here's what it looks like right now as far as the heat index. It feels like it is 83 degrees here in town, 86 right now at Stinson. 85 is the heat index in Castroville again because of all this humidity. There is a bit of a disturbance. Uh Technically a coolish front, so well, won't say cool, but cool front. That's technically what it is up there to the north. That's touching off a couple of showers. That's basically going to be lingering up here to the north. One or two of those obviously are trying to scoot down into portions of, uh, say, Kerr County. Um, yeah, one or two showers out there. Uh, I don't think it looks like anything is going to be trying to get here in town, but you can't completely rule that out on the far northwest side of town. One or two of those little stray sprinkles out there. And also just because all this humidity is getting pumped in here, you can't rule out maybe even a little bit of mist around the area this morning. Now throughout the day, Partly cloudy, again, 90, a shower or two today. And same thing tomorrow, same thing the next couple of days. And then it is going to start to warm up, so we'll be back up to what you would expect. Also on top of this, we got some of that dust to deal with. So, again, it can kind of, uh, kind of do like allergy type stuff out there if you are susceptible to it. Hazy skies and it's going to be kind of going back and forth throughout the uh, the rest of the week. More on that closer look at the upcoming weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavasso's got that problem on the north side, right? That's right, Mike, and it looks like we're seeing a little bit of progress now here at 281 at Bitters. You can see that we still have a few first responders that are out there right now. Uh, take a look at this shot from Transguide at 281 right at Bitters. We do have some road flares that are being set up right there. Text page has showed that this crash or rollover start happened a little bit just before four this morning uh, and it looks like it's been clearing up uh, gradually as we've been seeing the morning just progress here. Take a look right now at the map that rollover off 281 southbound right at West Bitters. As we mentioned earlier, it's not on the main highways and you can see from that shot at Transguide. It's right to off on the frontage road. Uh, you're going to want to use caution in that area if you are an early morning commuter. Again, this is going out southbound off 281 right at West Bitters. Still early enough to where we're not seeing any big issues when it comes to delays. Uh, it's still minor uh, is flooding here off US 90 westbound from Castroville Road to Suzette Avenue. We've been talking about that for almost a week now, uh, so it's just wise to use some caution out there along 90. We know it was a big, big problem spot last week with all that heavy rainfall, but overall it's been a pretty quiet start to that morning uh, this morning. That is, but we are going to continue to watch that rollover crash right over there off 281 at West Bitters. Let's go ahead and get to our inbound time 
times right now. Uh, if you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area from I-10, we got 24 minutes this morning and 281, 26 minutes coming in from Bulverde, coming in from 35 and New Braunfels, 26 minutes again to the downtown San Antonio area. So no big issues. Things are looking pretty green for this Monday morning. Still going to be monitoring this rollover at 281 at Bitters, but as you can see, it does look like we are seeing some progress there, and I believe we do have a crew that went out there to the field, so we'll be working to get you more updates on that story throughout GMSA. Mark Steph. The capital murder trial of Otis McCain is scheduled to begin this morning here in Bear County. He's accused of killing SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi back in 2016. It is a case we will be following closely. Our right, Sarah Costa is live from the north side with what we know about this case. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, this is Bear County's first death penalty case in five years where Otis McCain will stand trial for murder starting today. In 2016, SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi was shot and killed. Otis McCain is accused of murdering Marconi. In November of 2016, Marconi was sitting in his patrol car outside of SAPD public safety headquarters, writing a ticket when someone in a black car pulled up behind him. The driver walked up to the police unit and shot Marconi twice in the head as he sat in the driver's seat. There was a massive manhunt for the shooter and a tip led police to arrest McCain 30 hours later. After a delay for more than a year, his trial will start today in the 379th District Court presided by Judge Ron Runhell. In Texas, there are several different crimes that are punishable by death. Some of those capital offenses include the murder of a public safety officer, judge, or prison guard. Now, KSAT will be covering this trial and its proceedings every single day, so make sure you tune in, tune in on air and online for all of those updates and recaps. Live from the North Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Pfizer plans to meet with top U.S. health officials later today to discuss federal authorization for a third dose of its vaccine. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, hospital workers around the country at wit's end. This is nothing that I had imagined out of nursing school. For the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, Springfield, Missouri's Mercy Hospital opening a sixth COVID ward, a stark example of the Delta variant's increasing threat. 25 states now facing a steady increase in new cases, 17 states seeing a jump in hospital admissions, and in six of those states, the number of people dying every day is going up, with 99.5% of them unvaccinated according to the CDC director. Dr. Anthony Fauci pointing to a solution. The bad news is that we have a very nasty variant and the good news is that we have a vaccine that works against it. And this morning, new word from Pfizer, the drug company meeting with the FDA today to discuss its request for federal authorization for a third dose of its COVID-19 vaccine. It is entirely conceivable, maybe likely that at some time we will need a boost the CDC and FDA says a booster shot isn't needed at the moment, but Pfizer claims their booster shot would add optimal protection within 12 months after a second dose. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Lawmakers in Austin spent all weekend talking about a high-profile voting legislation. After hours of debate spanning two days, Senate and House committees moved forward with new versions of the voting legislation. The bills are similar to Senate Bill 7, which House Democrats walked out on during the regular legislative session. The bill would ban 24-hour voting and drive-through voting. The legislation would also require someone to request a mail-in ballot in order to be sent one. This is just the first of an 11 item agenda for the special session, which includes bills related to critical race theory and transgender youth. And time now is 508 and it's about 78 degrees right now. Some shoppers on Amazon may have noticed problems overnight. We'll tell you why the popular site was down for thousands of users. Plus more people once again buying wedding rings. The reason behind the hike and what you can expect to pay. Outside with live cam, a dusty start to our Monday morning out there. You kind of see that Saharan dust hanging over the tops of the downtown skyline. Mike has your full forecast coming up. Monday morning, 512. Welcome back to GMSA. The wedding industry rebounding quickly as the United States recovers from the pandemic. And with the return to normalcy in the air, more Americans are preparing to pop the question. Max Massey breaks down the numbers and explains the rise in ring sales.
Fine jewelers across the country say they saw massive spikes in demand and sales of engagement rings in April and May, following more access to COVID vaccinations throughout the country. Sales numbers skyrocketing this spring for a clear-cut New York-based engagement ring company that sells its gems online. The founder of the business says customers are on the hunt for engagement rings because now they can finally travel and propose on vacation. The company has been inundated with requests from couples who are fighting for wedding venues and get this, sales for rings have quadrupled in May of 2021 compared to 2020. We know millions of Americans have faced devastating economic losses during this pandemic, but some workers who stayed employed or had a partner who did so were able to save their money. The travel shutdown and the restaurant closures meant that some people actually have much more disposable income than usual and that means that they can spend more and do more to pop the question and the prices for those rings might be going up pent up demand and a dip in production because of covid restrictions well it led to a global diamond shortage during the pandemic and this surge is not going away anytime soon. The CEO of De Beers Group, one of the largest diamond companies across the world, says the sentiment is increasingly optimistic. Guys, back to you. And time now is 513. It's about 78 degrees out there. Up next, how the latest FIFA soccer video game is using groundbreaking new gameplay technology. And record sales for the Nintendo 64 version of Super Mario. We're going to tell you how much a sealed copy just sold for at auction. Thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer are living in the moment and taking Ibrance. Ibrance with an aromatase inhibitor is for postmenopausal women or for men with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal based therapy. Ibrance plus letrozole significantly delayed disease progression versus letrozole. Ibrance may cause low white blood cell counts that may lead to serious infections. Ibrance may cause severe inflammation of the lungs. Both of these can lead to death. Tell your doctor if you have new or worsening chest pain, cough, or trouble breathing. Before taking Ibrance, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding. For more information about side effects, talk to your doctor. Be in your moment. Ask your doctor about Ibrance. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon's overnight outage. The company says it's now restored service after a nearly two-hour global shutdown. Tens of thousands of users complained they couldn't get past the home page after logging in, or if they did, they weren't able to complete their purchases. Game maker EA is previewing its upcoming FIFA 22 and its hyper motion system. The company says it provides more realistic animation and gameplay when you're using several of the latest gaming consoles. FIFA 22 is scheduled for release October 1st. An unopened copy of Nintendo's classic Super Mario 64 from 1996 has sold it auction for more than $1.5 million. That's nearly double a record just set on Friday for the most expensive video game ever sold. I wonder what 90s games I've got lying around and if they're worth millions. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Our producer told us that uh, video game was sold uh, right here in Texas. Yes, Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not too far from here. A lot of money. Let's check on the roads right now. It is 518. Stephen, good morning. Hey, good morning, Mark and Steph. Well, we're seeing a lot of good progress out here at 281 at Bitters, where we had that rollover crash that was reported a little bit earlier this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look here. If I can jump over to our shot here from uh, our remote clicker. All right. We're having some clicking problems here, but we do want to get to some video that our photojournalist was able to get out on the scene. Take a look at this crash there again off 281 at bidders. Now, TxDOT has reported it as a rollover, but you can see that we do have many first responders that were out there on the scene a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, take a look. Also looks like somebody was seriously hurt out there. Uh, not too sure what exactly led to this rollover crash, but bringing it back here to the maps, we can see that this is right over here off 281 southbound right at bidders road. And as we bring it out there, you know, 281 
has been a was kind of been an area of uh, concern this morning as we're seeing more issues kind of coming out out, out there. 281 southbound at Loop 410, also a stalled vehicle that was just came up in our system. Uh, and let's go ahead and bring it to the wide scope right now around our maps. We're not seeing a lot of other issues. Again, 281 was where we were seeing some of these incidents that were popping up uh, just over the last few minutes here and uh, throughout the morning. But uh, speaking of 281, there will be some construction going on that you're going to want to be on the lookout for. This is going to be going on uh, right at uh, 281 near Overlook Parkway. What they're doing there is some sidewalk improvements and it's going to be a single lane southbound closure. Now this is happening today, so they already got through day one, but it will continue through Friday, July 16th from nine in the evening to five in the morning and looks like our clicker is working there again. So uh, bringing it back here to 281 at bidders. Looks like we got some good progress out there, guys, but drive safe. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, a little humid today. <laughs> yes, just a little bit. She's she's wrapping it nicely with a pretty bow on top. No, it's very humid when you step outside this morning, so you can't get around that. It's some of the highest humidity we've seen, you know, a few weeks ago after a lot of heavy rain. We had the very, very thick humidity, and that's how it is when you step outside. Beautiful sunset yesterday. Yesterday was a good looking day, and actually uh, in the morning hours, you know, it wasn't that bad. I had to cut the grass and it wasn't terrible outside in late morning. And then as you can see, the sunset and a little bit of an extra glow to it thanks to some of that dust out there this morning. We've got a lot of humidity and cloud cover and well, that the, the dust is kind of adding to the haze. By the way, yesterday was the first day in eight days in July that we did not see any measurable rain officially out at San Antonio International. And that was the most that eight day stretch the most in the month of July since going way back to 1972. Now, of course, in some months of July. We've had a lot more rain, but not eight consecutive days of measurable rain. Speaking of rain, we got a little bit out there in the hill country, but as you can see, that's falling apart. It's basically along a there's a bit of a front which is lying up here to the north and that's going to sort of stay up there. It's not going to move down in our direction, so that'll be the focal point for a couple more showers, thunderstorms later on today. Uh, some of our northern counties, as you can see, Gillespie County, a couple of these showers up around Junction, maybe northern Edwards County, one or two of those showers and some may be confined or still popping up up to the north later on today, and that's pretty much going to be about it. We'll get a lot of sea breeze showers kind of coming on in here. And again, this is that broad brush computer model. This is just saying, OK, there's a little bit of a chance of rain throughout the afternoon hours. Same thing on Wednesday, Thursday as well, maybe into Friday and then going into the weekend rain chances and only put in about 20%. That's about the extent of it, but uh, there'll still be one or two of them out there. And again, few and far between, just kind of a mention of it. Uh, another quick check in the tropics. Nothing is going on right now. Nothing that the Hurricane Center is flagging for any sort of formation over the next uh, 48 hours. So forecast today, we are going to have partly sunny skies at noon. Again, it's going to be a little bit more on the hazy side today, especially as the sun is going down this evening, just because of some of that extra uh, African dust that's moving on in here. Partly cloudy, can't rule out a shower. Well, one or two of them up to the north and then those sea breeze showers, but they're going to be few and far between 90 high temperature today. Now, of course, it's going to feel hotter than that with the humidity, but these numbers are still on the below normal side, and that's going to be the case through really the rest of the work week, and we'll make it back up to just about normal by the weekend. Normal for July. Exactly, which <laughs> means hot. Thank, Thank you, you Mike. Michael. Right now, 522, about 78 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, David Harbour brings the funny and Black Widow. Plus, news takes to the sky in a new documentary called Whirly Bird. Movie news now from the hottest film in theaters to a documentary making waves. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. <clears throat> It still fits. Oh my God. Much of the humor in Black Widow comes from the family dynamic, led by David Harbour as the has been super soldier Red Guardian. 14 hours into a stunt, a heavy day where I'm just exhausted and beat up, and then knowing I had to come back to work at six in the morning to do it again. Those were not fun days, but the days where we're sitting around around a dinner table with Rachel Weisz, Scarlett Johansson, and Florence Pugh being directed by Kate Shortland, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, to be honest. 
Summer of Soul is rocking the specialty box office. The film about a 1969 black music festival in Harlem has made $1.4 million, the year's top grossing documentary so far. It was not unusual for me to drive 110, 120 miles an hour to get to a news team. And that's when I started thinking about helicopters. The helicopter changed everything. That was when I became the photographer. We owned the skies. Here's the first trailer for Whirly Bird, about the Los Angeles couple who took to the skies in the 1980s and 90s and revolutionized breaking news coverage. The documentary premiered last year at Sundance and arrives in theaters and on demand August 6th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Oh, uh, now in L.A., it's just a normal everyday thing for it choppers to fly it is. almost nonstop and cover every single car chase there is. Yeah, and, and we have drones now, so that will mm -hmm. become interesting as well. Still, um, that looks interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really, really did. And back to Black Widow real quick. I'm glad I want I want it. I saw it this weekend. Mm -hmm. I only wanted to see it because I've only been watching the preview for over a year. <laughs> I know. So it's like, you know, I wanted to come full circle. You, you have to see it, yeah. I, I feel like I need to see it as well. We'll, we'll get there. Well, it was, due, it was due out in May of last year. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a while, and mm -hmm. we've seen that preview many times. Yes, Mike. And stay, I was going to say, like, we were talking about stay till the end, the very end after the credits. Yeah, there's it's it's post credit scene. Yeah. Yes. Usually they put them, like, after the list of stars, there's but like, this was, yeah. like, after even. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't, yeah. so don't take off. Nope. Okay. Right now, 528, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, to boost or not to boost? That's the big question for health officials right now. We're going to have a preview today's meeting as Pfizer gets ready to meet with U.S. officials. Are you ready for the next big storm? We've already seen lots of flooding this year in San Antonio. We have some of the easiest things to do so you can be prepared. Plus, the cost of child care is skyrocketing right now. We're going to tell you the reason behind that increase and how the Biden administration is trying to help. Coming up, we're going to get the latest on the COVID-19 vaccine situation here in the U.S. as debate begins about a possible COVID-19 vaccine booster. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid, humid start to your day. We are at 78 degrees and expecting sunshine with some of it later on. Good morning. It's Monday. It's July 12th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, we had a good weekend, too. Uh, got, got some rain on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And just when I thought things were winding down Saturday, we had more storms move in. But Sunday, not bad at all, Mike Osterhage. And yesterday was the first day in eight that we did not have any measurable rain out there at the airport, which is the longest streak since way back in the early 70s. Um, obviously, we've had more in certain months of July, like back in 2002. But that was the, the longest streak, like I said, in uh, what was that? about 40 years 79 right now 75 is the dew point temperature which means there is a ton of humidity out there it's really going to hit you in the face when you walk outside this morning the heat index is 86 at stinson 85 castorville 83 is what it feels like at the airport canyon lake as well as lotus and we've got a couple of showers up to the north there is a a bit of a well called the disturbance of front which is lying up there to the north that's going to continue to be the focal point especially later on this afternoon but up to the North. It's pretty much stopped its southward progression. There are a couple of showers well out ahead of it in parts of the hill country. Yeah, a few and far between. Also, don't be surprised if there's even a little bit of mist or a sprinkle around here. Again, just because of that extra humidity as we approach the sunrise, you know, sometimes uh, some of those get squeezed on out. 86 degrees today at noon, 90 high temperature today. So just number wise, we're still going to be on the low side of things. Of course, you got to factor in all the humidity and there is a very small chance for one or two showers just to kind of take into account some of the sea breeze, uh, one or two of those stragglers up to the north. Most of us are not going to be seeing any rain. That's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the week. Also, high temperatures, they'll start to creep up ever so slowly as we go into the rest of the week. How hot? Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Got a big problem still on the uh, north side? Yeah, we're seeing some uh, scattered problems now, Mike. And this one uh, just popped up just a few moments ago while you were talking. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. You can see it uh, looks like we got a stalled vehicle out right over there. And we are going to be watching these. Uh, as the morning does pick up, we start to see more stalls. So be sure to check your vehicles because that's a big one before you get on the roadways. Uh, we have spotted a crash right over here off I-35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. I was just talking to our friends over at TransGuide. That crash has since 
it's cleared, but we can see some of, of those residual uh, cars or traffic, I should say, that is building up there off I-35 southbound right at Brooklyn. So again, that crash has since cleared, uh, but again, leaving behind a trail of traffic, as you can see right behind me, bringing it all the way back up here over to the north side, 281 southbound at West Bitters Road. Uh, there's still a police presence out there right now, but there was a rollover crash that was reported out there just before four this morning. It looks like that has since cleared, but that was not on any of the main lanes. That was right again off 281 southbound at West Bitters Road. Uh, taking a look at the wider scope of things, it is looking pretty green in the Alamo City and some of the outlying areas. So let's go ahead and get to those inbound times. If you are coming from Seguin, well, it's pretty green. 29 minutes on I-10 coming in from to the downtown San Antonio area. Coming in from 87 uh, from Lavernia, we got 22 minutes and 28 minutes coming in from Floresville. Uh, bringing it back here to those stalled vehicles. Again, be sure to check your tires oil before you get on the roadways. And if you encounter problems like this, don't forget Texas Heroes are out there if you encounter them on any highways. But we'll be watching the roads closely and seeing how this Monday gets going. This morning, Pfizer thinks a booster for its COVID-19 vaccine might be necessary, something they're set to talk about with U.S. officials today. For now, officials with the FDA and the CDC say they're not necessary. However, CNN's Britt Collar reports some medical experts say that could change. This week marks seven months since the first American outside of a trial got a COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> Since then, hundreds of millions of Americans have rolled up their sleeves too. More than 56% of people who can get vaccinated, that's 12 and up, are fully vaccinated. But today, a senior health official says Pfizer will brief government officials about the potential need for a booster dose of its vaccine. After Israel released data showing a marked decline in its effectiveness from more than 90% down to about 64% as the Delta variant spreads. Now, Israel will offer a third dose of Pfizer's vaccine to people who are immunocompromised. And the UK announced last month it might offer boosters too. But the CDC and the FDA say Americans who have been fully vaccinated do not need a booster shot at this time. At this time being key. But that doesn't mean we stop there. There are studies being done now, ongoing as we speak, about looking at the feasibility about if and when we should be boosting people. And who should get that booster? But getting FDA approval and a formal CDC recommendation takes time. That's a multi-month process, so if we don't get started right now, we're not going to be in a position to have boosters available should we need it come the fall. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. In Florida, authorities searching for victims of that deadly condo collapse say they hope to conclude their painstaking work in the coming weeks. City leaders say 90 deaths have now been confirmed. Among them are 71 bodies that have been positively identified. Some 31 people are still missing. Crews continue to search the remaining pile of rubble in search of bodies. Miami-Dade County's fire chief says he is not certain when recovery operations would be completed. The Biden administration has upheld a Trump era rejection of nearly all significant Chinese maritime claims in the South China Sea. The administration also warned China that any attack on the Philippines in the Flashpoint region would draw a U.S. response under a mutual defense treaty. The stern message came in a statement released late yesterday, a statement made ahead of this week's fifth anniversary, rather fifth anniversary of an international tribunal's ruling in favor of the Philippines against China's maritime claims. Well, Goodwill San Antonio has the mission to serve people who face difficult circumstances. And like most organizations in and around San Antonio, they've had to deal with obstacle after obstacle because of the pandemic. This weekend, Max Massey and Sarah Acosta spoke with the CEO of Goodwill San Antonio. The organization here in San Antonio is centered around fighting poverty and creating opportunity. The CEO of Goodwill San Antonio says they need more and more donations and they want to remind people that the organization does so much on top of all their stores. Our mission is to help change lives through the power of work. And we do that through training, job training, and through placement and employment. Uh, that's either within our stores or externally into the community. Uh, we do skills training at our, at our academies, and we do job placement uh, at our career centers. 
We have leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So if you have someone from our community that you would like to hear from or if you have any questions for our guests, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. 538 about 78 degrees and still ahead. We'll tell you why the cost of child care has nearly doubled over the past year or so and how the Biden administration is trying to help. Now it's the time to prepare for hurricane season. Even though San Antonio may not get a direct hit by a hurricane, we still see lots of rain and flooding from approaching tropical systems. Up next, we have some things you can do now to be ready just in case. And taking a look outside with live cam here in San Antonio. Uh, not that rainy, but very, very humid for now. It's 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Just about 542, hurricane season is here, and now's the time to plan ahead. And while San Antonio may not see a direct hit by a hurricane, we are still close enough to the Gulf Coast to feel an impact. RJ Marquez has some simple reminders on things you can do now to help you ride out a storm later. When it comes to major storms like hurricanes, the best thing is preparing beforehand. Start by making sure you have enough non-perishable food as well as water to last three to seven days for you and your family. And have cash on hand in case the power is knocked out, which could also take out ATMs and the ability of stores or businesses to process credit cards. You'll want to charge all electronics and declutter your outside areas. Patio furniture and other items can become projectiles in storms, so make sure everything is secured. Make sure you fill any important prescription medications ahead of time in the event that you can't get to the pharmacy. And take a look at your homeowners and flood insurance to determine if you still think you have adequate coverage for your home. With the rise in real estate values, you'll want to make sure your insurance policy has kept up with both home values and replacement cost. Many insurance policies have a 2% hurricane deductible, and it may take a while for your insurer to process claims. So make sure you have enough cash on hand in case you have to come up with funds for urgent repairs. And secure valuables, like jewelry and important personal items in either a safe deposit box or a box that is fire and waterproof. And we've already seen flooding this year in San Antonio, so it's always a good idea to be prepared for an approaching tropical system. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 5.43 and it's about 78 degrees out there. Up next on the morning show, health professionals warning parents about an increase in RSV cases among young children. What you can do if your child gets sick. 5.46, the CDC is warning parents about an uptick in a severe respiratory virus among young children. Doctors say they've been seeing more cases of respiratory syncytial virus or RSV in infants and young children. Sarah Costa explains why it's important for parents to be vigilant and get your baby care as soon as they show symptoms. RSV or respiratory central virus is a common cause of cold like symptoms, but can be serious for infants and the elderly. Cases dropped dramatically last year with people staying home and social distancing, but began popping up as pandemic restrictions eased. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention issued a health advisory in June about an increase in RSV cases across parts of the South. RSV cases are usually higher in the winter, but doctors believe that with more people coming out of quarantine cases of RSV have risen in the summer. Children infected with the virus usually develop only mild illness, but for some, these infections can be serious. Among U.S. children under the age of five, RSV typically leads to two million doctors office visits each year, 58,000 hospitalizations and up to 500 deaths higher than the estimated toll on children from COVID-19. In infants, symptoms may include fussiness, poor feeding, fever and tiredness. Children may have runny noses, decreased appetite, coughs and wheezing. But in very young infants and those born prematurely, the virus can cause small airways in the lungs to become swollen and filled with mucus. Babies who develop this condition may require hospitalization and oxygen or ventilator treatment. There is no approved treatment for RSV, although a once monthly injection of an antibody based medicine is sometimes prescribed before and throughout RSV season to help prevent severe RSV lung problems in premature infants and other babies at risk for serious disease. Reinfections are common, but typically cause milder symptoms than the initial illness. 
RSV spreads through contact with airborne droplets from an infected person, but it's much more likely than COVID-19 to linger on skin and other surfaces, including toys, which can also be a source of transmission. Doctors encourage washing your children's hands and wiping down their shared toys. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. In your morning consumer headlines, parents are finding that for kids too young for school, childcare has become unaffordable. A model developed by the Center for American Progress estimates the average annual daycare cost for a toddler in the U.S. pre-COVID was just over $9,000. But during the pandemic, it almost doubled to nearly 18,000. Childcare centers have increased expenses due to COVID-related protections while also losing workers, forcing many to decrease class sizes. The Biden administration is hoping the upcoming child tax credit will start to help families. Small businesses across our country are feeling the squeeze from the shipping crunch with retailers like Amazon and Walmart rushing to try to restock. Smaller businesses are battling over limited spots on those big cargo ships. The average price to ship a container from Asia has more than doubled since the start of the year. And looking at the trans guy cameras here, things like thing looks like things are running pretty smoothly so far. Is that the case, Stephen? Yeah, you know we're seeing things that are moving for this Monday morning here. But uh, as the, you know the morning does pick up, that's when we start to encounter a little bit more problems out on a roadway. And right now that looks to be like a few stalls that we're spotting out there. But take a look here at 281 at Bitters. We did have that rollover crash that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, looks like it's still picking up now. 35 upper level at Brooklyn. We do have a stalled vehicle out there, and that. Uh, we'll get to in just a moment, but as we mentioned earlier, yes, yeah, stalls are going to be the big issue right now. I-35 northbound at Ben Zingelman, we do have a lane block due to a stalled vehicle. And as I mentioned, as you saw in that shot earlier, where there was a little bit of lights out there on that trans guide shot, I-35 northbound, another stalled vehicle at Brooklyn Avenue. Now, there was also a crash that was reported on 35 southbound a little bit earlier, but that has since cleared. Now we're seeing a stalled vehicle. We also want to bring your attention back here to US 90 westbound from Cashville Road to Suzette Avenue, TxDOT still reporting some high water out there following last week's heavy downpour. But taking a look here, uh, yeah, pretty calm morning so far. But the big issue, as we mentioned, are going to be those stalls. But if one of the places you're going to be heading to is the gas station, well, we have your gas prices from AAA. Uh, they're reporting right now in Bear County. The average gas price for regular gas is 273 uh, around the state. We're looking at 282 and around the country 314. So good news for those that are going to be heading to the pump. This is always good to have handy uh, Mondays and morning that you always take your vehicle to go get fueled up like me. So 35 at Space Center, 1604 at Petranco. Yeah, things are moving, guys. But again, the big issues that we're seeing are stalls right now and some residual uh, presence here at 281 at Bitters. Just make sure you check your vehicles before you get on the roadways. We sure will. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mike's talking about some potentially dusty sunrises and sunsets. Yeah, the Saharan dust is starting to uh, work its way back into the area and it looks like we're going to have a couple of uh, kind of higher plumes the next over the next week. Today being one of them, we get sort of a little surge of it coming in here and that adds to the, well, beautiful sunsets. I mean, how gorgeous is that? And still a little bit of leftover water there on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the driveway. And things will continue to dry out, but it's also all that leftover moisture around here from the rain that we had that is adding to the humidity factor because boy, oh boy, oh boy, is it humid when you step outside this morning. So we've got our clouds hanging around here, our usual morning clouds, and then also... <clears throat> A frog in my throat as well. We've got a bit of a disturbance hanging around here just on the northern fringes of the hill country, and that's uh, touching off a couple of those showers. But notice how they sort of continue to, to kind of die off a little bit. There were actually a couple of uh, lightning strikes being detected well north of Austin. So there'll be a few of these showers still hanging around up to the north even later on today with that disturbance hanging around there. And so that may touch off one or two of them out there later on today. Then also we'll have the sea breeze to deal with. Yesterday, we did not crack 90, 89 in town, 92 Pleasanton, and the hot spot on this map was 95 degrees, which is very unusual that everybody was this low for this time of year. That despite the fact we did get some sunshine. Now, we are going to be a bit warmer today, getting in the mid-upper 90s down there along the, the Rio Grande Valley, 97 Rio, uh, Del Rio. 90 here in town, which is about 4 degrees below normal, but everybody is still going to be 
on the low side of things as far as temperatures. Heat index readings, yeah, at about 5, 10 degrees to some of these numbers. So we will have those heat index readings into the uh, about low hundreds, especially down to the southeast. And we'll still keep the humidity around for the next couple of days. So we've got this flow coming in here out of the north right now. Again, this is kind of an unusual situation to have that sort of front hanging around here. And that's all being driven around that low up there right around St. Louis. Those are the only real standout features around the country right now. And this is very unusual because a lot of times in the summertime, this high is really dominating and covering most of our area. But we keep that the high sort of split up a little bit. And so that's what's going to allow one or two of those sea breeze showers around here the next couple of days. And also it's helping to keep temperatures slightly below normal, although we'll finally get back up to what you'd expect for July by the end of the week. 86 at noon today, partly sunny skies Again, hazy sunshine out there, especially late in the day. You'll notice it a lot more with some of that uh, Saharan dust. A shower or two is going to be possible one or two up to the north. And then, of course, the sea breeze to deal with. And uh, same thing in the next couple of days. Most everybody will not see any rain, but just you know, one or two of them out there and then mid 90s by the weekend. Thank you, Mike. About 554, 78 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, eight, five, fireball two, daily four, five, nine, eight, seven, fireball six. Cash five numbers 11, 14, 21, 32, 34, lotto Texas, 10, 23, 42, 46, 48, 51. Powerball one, five, 29, 54, 62, Powerball three, power play two. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, Astros get a big time win ahead of the MLB All-Star Game. We've got highlights, plus the latest on our overnight shooting on our city's west side. And the capital murder trial of Otis McCain set to begin this morning. We'll take a look at what to expect in the coming days. Transguide right now looking live at 35 at Space Center. You can see that dust in the air over San Antonio. We're checking in with Mike and Steven next. Top local stories this morning, a scary overnight crash sends two people to the hospital. We'll have more details. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a nice shot there. Not too bad at 78 degrees, but it is pretty humid out there. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Monday. It is July 12th. We hope you had an awesome weekend. Yes, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a little bit of rain on Saturday, so but it was nice because it was kind of on and off for us. What about you guys? It wasn't bad at all, as a matter of fact, and we started to notice that uh, dust start to move into the area yesterday. Mike Ostrage joins us now with a look ahead to our Monday and the rest of our week. Good morning. Yeah, it's going to be sticking around. Some of the dust is, you know, kind of off and on throughout the rest of the week, but it will be uh, mainly noticeable with some of the, uh, the sunsets mm -hmm. around here. And you may kind of, you know, feel it a little bit, especially, you know, kind of on top of all this mold, too, if in, you know, some sort of an allergy type situation. 81 is the heat index here in town right now. 86 stints and the humidity is just sky high this morning when you step outside. We have a little bit of rain up to the north and notice how some of these showers were trying to move into Kerr County and uh, portions of Kendall County, but sort of fizzled out a few of them over there toward Rock Springs. There is actually a little bit of a front line up to the north that's going to stay up there and it'll be the focal point for a few more showers later on this afternoon. Then we'll of course have some of the sea breeze showers to uh, deal with uh, back to the African, excuse me, Saharan dust, African dust uh, allergy like symptoms. Yeah, I can add to that a little bit. Those hazy skies and these plumes, like I said, are going to be coming and going. It looks like we have a plume today and then especially later on in the week uh, kind of a, another one. Temperatures are in the mid 70s right now, mid to upper 70s, and we're going to be staying there throughout the rest of the morning and then throughout the rest of today. We'll make it into the mid 80s at noon. We'll have more clouds around this morning and they'll start to uh, break up a little bit more as the day rolls on. So partly cloudy skies and again a stray shower to can't be completely ruled out, but wouldn't count on it. So pretty much we're going to be done with all the, the rain after that eight day stretch of measurable rain when the longest uh, consecutive streaks is since about the past 40 years here in town. So maybe a stray shower or two will be dealing with the dust temperatures still on the low side, but they will start to go up. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is the latest, sir? It's been the morning of stalls, Mike. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of that popping up here on our maps and on TxDOT's pages as we're getting this Monday morning move in here on the road 
other ways, I didn't think we had one just in that shot that uh, is popping up on my radar right now. 281 at one at Grayson. It does look like things are moving, but for some folks, they're having delays here, and that's because of some stalls. Again, we mentioned we're spotting here. This one off I-37 northbound right at Commerce. Uh, the shot at Transguide we're looking at shows that they are receiving some assistance, possibly from one of the Texas emergency response operators out there, highway emergency response operators, that is. Uh, take a look here off Loop 1604 westbound at Gulebra. Another stalled vehicle out there as well, not causing a lot of issues when it comes to delays, but we are seeing that gradually pick up here off I-37 northbound, another stalled vehicle right at Brooklyn Avenue. So these could be an issue if you're heading out the door in the next few minutes. Even this one here off US 90 eastbound at Callahan Road. So what you want to do is make sure you move over uh, so that way this person or any driver can receive some assistance. Uh, let's go ahead and bring it to our inbound times right now, though. Things are still looking pretty good if you're going to be commuting to the downtown San Antonio area. Coming in from Pleasanton, it's a pleasant drive with 28 minutes on 37 to the downtown San Antonio area. 35, uh, we're looking at 16 minutes coming in from Lytle. And if you are coming in from Highway 90, we're looking at 19 minutes. And we're bringing it back here to Transguide. We're going to be watching those stalled vehicles uh, with some friendly reminders for you before you hit the roadways. And of course, as always, make sure you keep both hands on the wheel and check your vehicle before you get going. Thank you, Stephen. The capital murder trial of Otis McCain begins this morning. He's accused of the 2016 murder of San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi. It's a case we will be following very closely. Our Eric Hernandez sat down with a legal analyst to break down this trial and what we can possibly expect in the coming days. To many, it may seem like an open and shut case, but it may not actually be that simple. Every procedural avenue has to be explored and thought about because someone's life is on the line. Criminal defense attorney John Hunter has defended suspects in capital cases before, most recently defending Mark Howerton in the case of murdered Trinity University cheerleader Kaylee Mendotti. In the particular case of Otis McCain, each side has a lot to present to the jury. The prosecution will have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that McCain is guilty. They're obviously going to have to be sensitive to several issues, the race of the defendant, uh, the overarching circumstances, the fact that this gentleman has had a great deal of difficulty with the police in the past, but largely uh, I think the prosecution needs to just simply play it simple. As for how the defense might proceed in this case? The defense is going to be following that basic uh, set of questions about whether or not the state can satisfy the basic uh, beyond a reasonable doubt standard as to whether or not this is the perpetrator. Whether the jury comes back with a guilty verdict or not, this case will be watched closely by all. The system is not about perfect enforcement of the law in every single instance, even when it's this serious. It's about making sure that the right thing is done in each person's case. And this trial will begin on Monday morning at 9 a.m. here in the 379th District Court. Judge Ron Ron Hill will be presiding over this case. Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. An overnight rollover crash on the north side sends two men to the ha hospital. It happened just after 3 this morning. A 281 at Bitters. That's where police say the vehicle came off the overpass and rolled over. Officers say the driver was unconscious when they arrived on scene. He was taken to a hospital. Condition is unknown at this time. The passenger was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There's no word on what caused the crash. San Antonio police are still searching for two suspects involved in a home invasion that happened on Saturday. The homeowner captured a video of the suspects on his surveillance camera. This happened in the 400 block of Porter Street on the city's southeast side. Adrian Hernandez says he was inside the house at the time with his mother, sister, and now ex-girlfriend. Hernandez says he was stepping out of the shower when he noticed two men had entered his home. One of the men hit him in the head with a pistol. We were told those men left empty handed, but Hernandez and his mother were hurt. My mom, she's out with a lot of pain. Uh, she broke her wrist um, with a pistol. Are you scared? No, I am not scared. I scared for my mother, not for me. Hernandez says he is working closely with investigators to find those suspects. If you have any information about that incident, you're asked to call police. Pfizer says it plans to meet with top U.S. health officials today to discuss the drug maker's request for federal authorization of a third dose of its vaccine. President Joe Biden's chief medical advisor acknowledging it's entirely conceivable, maybe even likely, that booster shots will be needed in the coming months. 
While Dr. Anthony Fauci isn't ruling out the possibility, he says it's too soon for the federal government to recommend another shot. This morning, protests breaking out across Cuba and being supported by many Cuban Americans. Demonstrators say they are being forced to deal with food shortages and price hikes, all as their country suffers from a coronavirus crisis. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, new turmoil in Cuba. Cubans taking to the streets, protesting food and medicine shortages. The largest demonstrations in nearly three decades in a country notorious for cracking down on dissent. An economic crisis has hit the island nation hard, forcing people to wait hours in line for food and job opportunities, scarce since the pandemic. Cuba's president blames U.S. restrictions on exports, foreign funds and travel. Cubans across the U.S. voicing their support for the protesters. Thousands shutting down streets in Miami Sunday, many demanding American politicians intervene. I want to see the president to see something and to do something for Cuba now. We have to make sure that their message today and every day moving forward isn't lost and that the true nature of this barbaric regime is exposed. In April, Raul Castro stepped down as leader, prompting increasing calls for change in the communist nation. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Monday morning time check, 608, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, restaurants are seeing more business, but their employees are leaving by the masses. We're going to explain after the break. Outside with live cam, that Saharan dust has arrived in Texas for its occasional visit. You kind of see that in the air over the skyline downtown. Mike's Full Forks cast is coming up. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos. We're glad you're with us. Welcome back. It's about 612. Restaurants across the country are seeing an increase in business as more people are starting to dine out again. But new data shows restaurant workers are calling it quits in mass numbers. Max Massey has more. The Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that in May, the rate of quits per share of employment in the accommodation and food sector, which includes restaurants, was 5.7 percent. That held steady for the month prior and to put it in perspective, it is higher than the quit rate across all other sectors, which actually fell from 2.8% in April to 2.5% in May. So, in short, more people in the restaurant industry are quitting. Restaurant workers have clearly had a challenging time during this pandemic. Many had to close their dining rooms early in the pandemic. Some of them had to close down permanently. It was months before those that survived could return to serving their guests at full capacity. Many had to close periodically if staffers got sick or were exposed to COVID. Many Many workers were laid off suddenly and then some left the industry for good. Job openings in the accommodation and food services sector actually increased from 1.16 million in April to 1.25 million in May. So to entice workers to stay or to hire more people, restaurants have been raising their wages. Darden Restaurants, which owns Olive Garden, announced in March they're hiking their pay. McDonald's, too, announced wage hikes for employees at corporate-owned stores in May. Others have done the same, but higher wages aren't always enough to get people to stay or get people on board. The chief economist at Moody's Analytics says he is hopeful that some labor shortages will ease when schools reopen and that enhanced unemployment benefits expire in the fall. But he and others warn that the worker shortages could persist for the long time, so only time will tell. But if you are here in San Antonio and you're looking for a job, the food and hospitality industry has plenty of openings. Guys, back to you. The NBA Finals resumed last night with the Milwaukee Bucks looking for their first win after dropping the first two games over in Phoenix. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks put on quite a show for fans last night right here on KSAT and ABC. The first NBA Finals in Milwaukee since 1974 went to the home team in a romp. Antetokounmpo had 41 points, 13 rebounds, and six assists. He led the Bucks to pound Phoenix 120 to 100, cutting the Suns' lead to 2-1. The Bucks overwhelmed the Suns to the tune of a 22 advantage in second chance points. Meanwhile, Chris Paul had 19 points, nine assists, but the Suns got next to nothing from Devin Booker. He shot three for 14, scoring just 10 points. The Bucks are hoping their success will continue. NBA Finals continue this week, starting Wednesday, tip off 8 p.m. in Milwaukee. Then Saturday, the series shifts back to Phoenix. They'll continue next week if necessary. You can watch all those games right here on KSAT 12.
Houston Astros trying to avoid a series sweep against the New York Yankees at home yesterday. Astros down 7-2, bottom of the ninth. Put on your rally caps. Chase McCormick drills a double deep to left. Your Yuli Gurriel and Kyle Tucker both scored 7-4. Next batter, Abraham Toro, sends one to right. And this one's going to go off the fence. That will drive in McCormick. And suddenly it is a two-run game. The inning continues with two on, one out. Guess who? It is Jose Altuve coming up. Sayonara out of here. The day after Aaron Judge trolled him, Altuve walks off the Yanks 8-7. to seven. The whole league is off today. The All-Star game is tomorrow night. Meanwhile, Rangers looking to end the first half of the season on a high note against the A's. Texas down 3-0, bottom of the fifth. Nick Solak hammers the ball to the gap in right center. David Dahl gets on his horse, and he will score all the way from first. But that's the only run of the day for the Rangers. They fall 4-1. Second half of the season begins for the Rangers Friday night when they face the Blue Jays. Switching to the minors, congratulations to missions pitcher Reese Kinnear. He was called up this week by the parent club, the San Diego Padres. Actually made his major league debut against the Rockies Friday night. Kinnear went three and two thirds innings on the spot start and struck out three batters as the Padres won the game four to two. Thanks to the weather, missions played a doubleheader yesterday. They split with the Amarillo Sod Poodles, winning 6-1 in the first game, and then fell 6-1 in the nightcap. This week, missions travel down to Corpus Christi to start a series with the Hooks. A series runs Tuesday through Sunday, and that is a look at morning sports. Well, good luck to missions. And last time we checked with Stephen Cavazos, there were quite a few stalled vehicles out on the roadways. Yeah, and it looks like it's the same stuff. I mean, we've been watching the roads pretty closely here, and we see that things are picking up here. US 90 at 36, even Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. A lot of more movement than as the morning progresses. But as we mentioned, yeah, definitely a lot of stalls right now. As you can see, this one here off Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road, we have another stalled vehicle uh, right over here off. I-37 northbound at Commerce Street that we told you a little bit about earlier this morning and jumping all the way over here to the northwest side. We have this one here off Loop 1604 westbound at Gulebito Road. So as you mentioned, it's been a morning of stalls uh, and that seems to be the trending issue at least for right now. So uh, what are some helpful tips if you find yourself stranded out on the highway? Well, as we've talked about this before, the Highway Emergency Response Operator, otherwise known as HERO, is a program within TechStop that's funded through the city and the county. Uh, uh, they're able to provide services such as relocating those disabled vehicles for to safety, provide traffic and lane control at crash scenes, change flat tire, and even add gasoline and water. You can contact them at 210-732-HERO, but keep in mind, uh, this you have to be stranded out on the highway. That is why they have the Highway Emergency Response Operator. So bringing it back here to Transguide, though, things are moving, but again, make sure that your car is working. Check your windshield wipers as well. Your gasoline, you want to be fueled up so we can get this week going. Good hey, advice. Thank you, Stephen. Did we ever determine what a sod poodle is? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just uh, looked we, it up. It's, an old, it's, it's a nickname for a prairie dog. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, okay. that was our educated guess or <laughs> slightly uneducated guess. Yes. Okay. We've been having a good time with that. Where sod poodle came from on prairie dog? I have no idea. But anyway, so yeah. <laughs> my day is now complete. I can sleep now. So I know what a sod poodle is. Anyway, uh, 78 degrees right now. It is very warm, about four or five degrees above the average normal low temperature right now. And of course, there's a ton of humidity out there. Uh, a shower or two is possible today. Not very likely, very humid this morning. Just get ready when you open up the front door. And then the rest of the week, it's going to start to warm up a little bit and a shower or two here or there is going to be possible today, but not very likely. Beautiful, beautiful picture. And um, a lot of this is due to some of the, the dust that is out there. That was one we showed last hour. And look at that one, beautiful sky. And this is what we're going to be seeing more of in the afternoons. It's kind of that, uh, that very enhanced orangey look thanks to some of that uh, Saharan dust that's out there. This morning, um, as you can see, it's kind of a little bit of the haze thanks to some of that dust. We do have a few showers up to the north. There's a bit of a front, which is actually sort of lying across the area right now. It's touching off a couple of showers around here, a few uh, thunderstorms way out there to the northeast, and that feature is going to just stay up there to the north later on today or throughout the day, so that's going to be a focal point for a couple of those showers up there. As you can see, one or two have been trying to work their way into portions of the hill country. Yeah, you know, 
take into account that and then also the sea breeze and that will that's uh, accounting for the 20 percent chance for a couple of showers around here so we've got a few of them that have been working their way in toward rock springs this morning once again the uh, saharan dust and we're going to start to see a few of these uh, plumes the next couple of days around here today being one of them and then maybe starts to uh, diminish a little bit as we go into the middle part of the week but we will still keep that flow coming across the atlantic ocean and it looks like another plume a uh, fairly substantial plume is going to be moving its way on in here by the uh, end of the week. The upper level steering winds are a little unusual for this time of year. Usually at this time we've got the Bermuda high off here to the east, which is just covering most all of the kind of eastern two thirds of the country will not split in half with this very unusual low right here in the center portion of the country, which is unusual for this time of year. And that's pretty much going to keep the high from really settling in on top of us. So as long as we don't have that tight lid on things, that dome on the atmosphere, we will see a couple of showers trying to move on in here, and that'll be the situation in through the rest of the week. And with this high off here to the east of us, we'll still get this kind of flow coming in and these little disturbances, just little little glitches in the atmosphere uh, sliding on in here uh, throughout the rest of the week. So again, a hay shower or two is going to be possible, although not very likely. Partly sunny skies today at noon, 86 degrees, high temperature and excuse me, high temperature then. Put my comma in the right place. 90 for a high, partly cloudy skies. <laughs> Punctuation is very important. Uh, shower or two is possible today. One or two of them up to the north and then a, a sea breeze shower. And the next couple of days, yeah, a shower here or there. It's not very likely, and then we'll finally make it back up in the mid-90s by the uh, the weekend, and plenty of sunshine, lots of humidity, too. What have you joked about for you? So, uh, you got to be careful to put the emphasis on the correct syllable. Yes, and, <laughs> and the punctuation in the right place. So. Yes, it does matter. It helps. <laughs> Thanks, Thank, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Right now, 622, about 78 degrees. And how much would you pay for an old video game from the 90s? Ahead on GMSA, the record sales price for an unopened copy of a classic Nintendo fan favorite. Thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer are living in the moment and taking iBrands. iBrands with an aromatase inhibitor is for postmenopausal women or for men with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal based therapy. iBrands plus letrozole significantly delayed disease progression versus letrozole. iBrands may cause low white blood cell counts that may lead to serious infections. iBrands may cause severe inflammation of the lungs. Both of these can lead to death. Tell your doctor if you have new or worsening chest pain, cough, or trouble breathing. Before taking iBrands, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding. For more information about side effects, talk to your doctor. Be in your moment. Ask your doctor about iBrands. An unopened copy of Nintendo's classic Super Mario 64 from 1996 has sold at auction for more than $1.5 million. That nearly doubles a record just set on Friday for the most expensive video game ever sold. Right now, 626, about 78 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, lots of questions following an overnight shooting on the city's west side. We're going to have those details. Right, we're checking the roads once again with Transguide as the sun is starting to come up on your early Monday morning. 10 at Frio, we're going to circle back to uh, Stephen Cavazos get an update on your Monday morning commute stall vehicle there at 90 and Nogalitos. A driver lost control of his car on 281 this morning and it fell off the highway, sending two men to the hospital. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, what police are saying about this accident. The Delta variant is driving cases, hospitalizations, and deaths among the unvaccinated. Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, why health experts say getting vaccinated is the only way out. It is a slightly dust filtered sunrise across South Texas on your early Monday morning. We're checking with Mike in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday the 12th. Hi, good morning. Yes, it feels like July. It's very humid out there. Yeah, Mike says we are getting back to a more normal pattern around here after what seems like months and months of downpours. Yeah, now the overall pattern still is going to be kind of unusual this time of year, but temperatures will get closer to a normal. We're right. still going to be below that.
today and then by the uh, end of the week we'll finally make it up to where we you would expect this time of year but yeah that humidity that Steph was talking about it's just you know, it slaps you in the face when you walk outside a couple little breaks in the clouds here and there and again that uh, little bit of haze that Mark pointed out there along the horizon from some of that that Saharan dust 78 degrees right now dew point Measure moisture in the atmosphere is 75 degrees. That means it's way up there. Yeah, it's like a wet towel steam bath, however you want to describe it. It feels like 83 in Castorville, 86 right now at Stinson when you factor in all that humidity. A couple of showers in the uh, western portion of the hill country, northern parts of hill country up there uh, around uh, Gillespie County and over toward Edwards County. There's a weak front which is lying up there to the north, and that's actually producing some thunderstorms further up to the northeast. And those are going to be, or that, that feature is going to be sticking around. So a few of those showers will sort of stick around up to the north later on today. And one or two of them may try and drop a little further to the south. This morning, very, very humid. Got those couple of showers up to the north. A shower or two is possible today. Not only north, but also uh, some along the sea breathe breeze, just one or two of them out there. 90 high temperature today and then tomorrow, partly cloudy again, a shower or two, and that's going to be the case the next couple of days. Then as we go in toward the end of the week, um, yeah, still a shower or two here. Or there is possible, not very likely, but temperatures again will start to warm back up. So it looks like we make it up to the mid 90s here in town, upper 90s, and maybe even some uh, triple digits off to the southwest by the end of the week. And still a fair amount of humidity out there. More on that closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is the latest, sir? Hey, thank you, Mike. It looks like a lot of people are having issues uh, with their vehicles this morning, although the shots of Trans Guide show a pretty move, pretty smooth start uh, to this Monday morning out on our roadways. Again, we are seeing uh, a trend in the stalled vehicles, at least for this uh, hour right now. Take a look. Uh, we told you about this one that's still out there. Loop 410 westbound right at Fredericksburg Road, but that's not the only one. We have one right not too far from there at Loop 410 uh, westbound right at Vance Jackson Road and moving it on a little bit further. We do see that we have a stalled vehicle at I-10 eastbound right at Houston Street, but it doesn't stop there. We're also spotting another vehicle. This one over here off Loop 410 eastbound. Three lanes are closed at San Pedro Avenue while we do have that uh, stall that's working out there. Bringing it down here to another stall, I-37 northbound at Commerce, Commerce Street. Again, you can see where we're seeing that trend in these vehicles that are having some issues. And this one out Loop 1604 westbound at Gulebra Road. So giving you the wider scope on how things are looking right now, although the relatively it looks pretty green around the Alamo City and those, some of those outlying areas, you can see a lot of these little icons that do indicate, yeah, we're having an issue with vehicles this morning. So be sure to look under your car, check your tires. You don't want to make sure you have any leaks that could pose a delay on your trip this morning to wherever you need to go. Still some high water out there off US 90 uh, out of those westbound lanes, as we told you following that last week's rainfall. But yeah, make sure you check those vehicles, guys. It is moving pretty smoothly so far. And we want to make sure you get to where you need to be on time and safely. Mark Stephanie. A driver lost control of his car, sending off a north side freeway early this morning. This happening at the intersection of Highway 281 and Bitters. Sarah Costa has been on the scene and has it cleared yet? Stephanie Mark, yeah, it just cleared about three minutes ago, but you can still see some of that debris left in the road and that embankment right behind me. Now, according to police, two men were in a silver sedan driving southbound on Highway 281 just after three o'clock this morning. The driver lost control and police say that's when his car flew off the highway, landing at this intersection of bidders. Then the car bounced off of bidders and proceeded to roll up the hill on the south side of the bridge here at bidders. So both of the men that were in that silver sedan were sent to University Hospital. Police say the driver was unconscious but breathing. The other was transported in stable condition with non-life threatening injuries. Several hours uh, investigators were here for several hours cleaning up that accident. Now you take us out back here live. A second accident happened while traffic investigators were cleaning up that accident. This is a minor accident. It doesn't seem like anyone was injured. And you can see that the wrecker is here to tow one of those vehicles. So if this is in your morning commute this morning, just take extra caution and stay safe on the road. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa in case that 12 news back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, questions remain following an overnight shooting on the city's west side. It happened just after 11 last night in the 2000 block of South San Jacinto Street, just west of I-10. That's where police say they found a 29-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the leg. 
He says he was just walking his dog when he was shot. He is expected to be okay. Officers believe the man may have been dropped off in the area after he was shot because he does not live nearby and there were no witnesses to the shooting. 90 people are now confirmed dead as a result of that condominium collapse in Surfside, Florida. 71 of the victims have been identified and next to Ken has been notified. At least 31 residents of the Champlain Tower South still unaccounted for, potentially buried in the rubble. As the recovery operation continues, more than 14 million pounds of concrete debris have been removed from that site. In California, firefighters are working in extreme heat to contain the largest wildfire in the state this year. A large part of the West continues to bake in triple digit temperatures that are expected to continue this week. A fire tornado was even caught on camera while crews battled the tenant fire, which is blazing across Northern California. Meanwhile, the Beckworth complex fire also burning in California near the Nevada border, just north of Lake Tahoe. That fire has burned nearly 84,000 acres. Back here in Texas, lawmakers in Austin spent all weekend talking about high profile voting legislation after a Senate Bill 7 failed to pass during the regular session. After hours of debate spanning two days, Senate and House committees move forward with new versions of the legislation. The bills are similar to Senate Bill 7, which is uh, the one that House Democrats walked out on during the regular legislative session. The bill would ban 24 hour voting and drive through voting. Legislation would also require someone to request a mail-in ballot in order to be sent one. This is just the first item of 11 for the special session, which includes bills related to critical race theory and transgender youth. Goodwill San Antonio has a mission to serve people who face difficult circumstances, yet have the courage and commitment to better themselves. But like most organizations, they've had to deal with obstacle after obstacle because of the pandemic. This weekend, Max Massey and Sarah Costa spoke with the CEO of Goodwill San Antonio. The organization here in San Antonio is centered around fighting poverty and creating opportunity. The CEO of Goodwill San Antonio says they need more and more donations, and they want to remind people that the organization does so much on top of all their stores. Our mission is to help change lives through the power of work. And we do that through training, job training, and through placement and employment. Uh, that's either within our stores or externally into the community. Uh, we do skills training at our, at our academies, and we do job placement uh, at our career centers. We have a leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So if you have someone from our community that you would like to hear from, or if you have any questions for our guests, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. Pfizer plans to meet with top U.S. health officials today to discuss federal authorization for a third dose of its vaccine. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, hospital workers around the country at wit's end. This is nothing that I had imagined out of nursing school. For the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, Springfield, Missouri's Mercy Hospital opening a sixth COVID ward, a stark example of the Delta variant's increasing threat. 25 states now facing a steady increase in new cases, 17 states seeing a jump in hospital admissions, and in six of those states, the number of people dying every day is going up, with 99.5% of them unvaccinated, according to the CDC director. Dr. Anthony Fauci pointing to a solution. The bad news is that we have a very nasty variant and the good news is that we have a vaccine that works against it. And this morning, new word from Pfizer, the drug company meeting with the FDA today to discuss its request for federal authorization for a third dose of its COVID-19 vaccine. It is entirely conceivable, maybe likely that at some time we will need a boost the CDC and FDA says a booster shot isn't needed at the moment, but Pfizer claims their booster shot would add optimal protection within 12 months after a second dose. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Now 640, about 77 degrees. And coming up, is it eye protection or just face fashion? Just ahead, how to make sure your sunglasses are properly protecting you. And welcome back. It's about 643. The summer sun is shining brighter, but before you head outside, make sure your eye protection is actually protecting you. UV radiation from sunlight can damage the eye's surface tissues as well as the cornea. UV light also produces DNA changes in the eye that can lead to skin cancers on the eyelids 
and premature aging of the delicate skin around your eyes. Max Massey has the details on how to enjoy the sunshine while lowering your risk for blinding eye diseases. It's summertime, the perfect time to get outdoors, enjoy some fun in the sun, but you need to protect more than just your skin. In my peace I don't think most people think about either the exposure of sun. Oftentimes they'll think about it on their body or their face, but maybe not around uh, the eyes. Unfortunately, the skin around your eye is some of the most vulnerable to the sun, uh, both in terms of just sun damage, but also in terms of developing cancers. Not wearing sunglasses can also cause cataracts, abnormal growths, macular degeneration, and skin cancer around your eyes. But how can you make sure the glasses you're wearing are actually protecting your eyes first? They should actually wrap around a bit. Fun frame shapes are cute, but don't always cover your entire eye. And darker does not always mean better. A dark pair of glasses, while may be your preference, doesn't necessarily mean that you have great UV protection. Look for a UV protection level of 95 to 100%. And just because your glasses are expensive, doesn't mean they are protective. Cheap, no-name glasses can also be effective if they have the right label. Sunlight can have a positive effect as long as you protect your eyes from UV damage. A little natural light every day can actually help you sleep better and spending time outdoors in the sun can help prevent nearsightedness in children. So spend time outside with the kiddos and don't forget those sunglasses. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Um, this week on What's Up South Texas, we take a look inside the life of a single father who put his music dreams on hold for his daughter's future. 31-year-old John Estrada loves to write music and poetry and would DJ on the weekends. When he found out he was having his daughter Lyric, he started looking for a career that would provide her with structure and a strong foundation. He eventually joined the Bear County Sheriff's Office. One lesson I did learn is patience and waiting on God's timing. You know? uh, writing daily in my journal from just just a little part of like Psalms and stuff from the Bible and just some of my life struggles are in there also in, in poetry form. I think that's what I would like to pass down from her. It's just, I think the main thing is just wisdom. And to spend more time with Lyric, John says he left his job as a sheriff's deputy and is currently in the process of starting his own trucking business. To see their full story and others featured on What's Up South Texas, you can visit the What's Up South Texas section on our website of KSAT.com. Well, let's see what's our driving problems on your morning commute. 646, here is Stephen Cavazos. Hey, thank you so much, Mark. Well, we are seeing this shot here at Transguide 281 at Bitter Saracosa. Showed us a view on the ground who was out there talking about a rollover crash. This looks like it was a separate crash, as she mentioned, that occurred a few hours after that rollover uh, that happened a little bit earlier this morning. But take a look there. We do have some wreckers out there along bidders. It looks like that should be clearing up, not going to be impacting anyone's drive time at this moment. But bringing it here to the map, 21 southbound right at Bitters Road. And as you can see, that's on the frontage road. So we're not seeing any big issues out on the main highway there, 281. So uh, as we talked about some stalls, this one looks like it just cleared right before we came up off I-10 eastbound at Houston Street. We showed you a number of stalls and those look like they have uh, since been uh, progressing and we're seeing some movement there. But look at this one here off 281 or US 90. Pardon me. Eastbound stalled vehicle right at Callahan Road. So as we mentioned, uh, that had seemed to be the trend, but it looks like it now is improving as we're taking a wider scope of the Alamo City and the outlying areas. You can see pretty green right now. Uh, again, still high water reported out there from text out off US 90. So just use some caution driving out there in the area. And of course, make sure you check your vehicles. Uh, this scene looks like it should be wrapping up and uh, let's go ahead and hope everybody gets to where they need to be safely today. Thank you, Stephen. And uh, Mike's already been talking about that uh, Saharan dust that worked its way in, I guess, yesterday, Mike? Yeah, it really started yesterday, mm -hmm. and we'll see a plume of it today and probably later on in the week as well, looking at some of the uh, computer models. And that what it's doing, obviously, is adding to not only the color of the sunset, but also that kind of hazy look. So and everything's not going to be real, real distinct. Even some of the clouds, the edges of them won't be quite as distinct later on today. Uh, maybe a little bit of that haze along the horizon, but boy, the combination of that and the humidity. Oh my goodness gracious, the humidity this morning. And uh, by the way, mold is on the high side and the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. 78 is what the temperature is right now. 80 stints in 79 Casterville dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere when you get up into the mid 70s and then upper 70s. That's really like a steam bath outside. 
So it feels like the low to mid 80s around a lot of the area, some 70s out there as well. There is a weak front which is lying uh, just across the area up to the north. That is touching off some of these showers around here. This is going to be staying up there to the north. Obviously, some of those are trying to uh, kind of scooch down a little bit further to the south into parts of Edwards County. So a couple of these showers around up to the north later on and even later on today because that's going to be sort of hanging out and sort of the focal point for some of those showers. Plus, we'll get a couple of them coming on in here from the uh, sea breeze. So Saharan dust, what causes it? Well, obviously it comes from the uh, Sahara Desert and then you got the trade winds, which it's always kind of funny to think because usually the weather moves from and the way the globe circular rotates, um, the earth rotates, it moves from west to east. But the trade winds go the opposite direction. They go from east to west. So it takes all that Saharan dust, throws it across the Atlantic Ocean and brings it in just about right on top of us, which is going to be the situation throughout much of the week this week. Like I said, get plume today and then later on in the week. So 86 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies, high temperature today up to 90. So we'll still be on the cooler side of things as far as the normal temperature, the average temperature, which is 94 this time of year. A couple of showers are possible, one or two of to the north, and then you get the sea breeze showers in there as well. Same thing next couple of days and slowly temperatures will start to creep up going in toward the end of the week and looks like we'll make it back up to a kind of a normal high temperature with partly cloudy skies, more clouds in the morning and a shower or two. Not very likely though. Not yeah. ruling them out entirely, though. Right. You know, we got those couple of them up there to the uh, north today. So sea breeze showers, that'll be about it. But yeah, just humid today. Yeah, I really noticed that dust yesterday. It was hard to make out the horizon. And it's like, oh, it's yeah. got to be the dust. Yeah, it won't be real <laughs> clean and sharp. No, but made for some pretty pictures this morning. True. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful sunrises. Yeah, thanks, Mike. About 10 till right now. I should say. Uh, and sunrise. Yeah. Right, both. Yeah, you're covered either way. About 10 <laughs> till 77 degrees. And the home of the Spurs will be getting a new name. So which companies could be eyeing the naming rights? And what does it mean for the team going forward? That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam. Let's see for ourselves. Yeah, very dusty out there. It's hard to make out that horizon. You can really see the dust right there on the horizon line. It's even hard to make out the edges of some of those clouds. We'll be right back to wrap up GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, wildfire emergency in the West. Mandatory evacuations are in place. Nearly 50 large uncontained wildfires and millions of folks now on heat alert again. This is all happening as the Northeast is facing another flash flood threat. I'm going to track both sides of the coin there right here on GMA. 654. And it looks like traffic is building there on I-35. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, that's definitely right, Mark and Steph. We're seeing uh, some issues out here at 35 at FM 725. As a view from Transguide, let's show you the wider scope here. Just take a look at these southbound lanes. Uh, what a nightmare right now for these drivers. And that's because there is a crash that was reported out there that is causing a lane closure here off I-35 southbound lane closed at Walnut Avenue due to that crash that you're seeing there in, your sis in our system. Jumping over to another crash that since looks like it has resolved, U.S. 281 southbound at Bitters Road. We just showed you that view a little bit earlier, but again, looks like things are picking up here. One stalled vehicle still left here at U.S. 90 at Callahan Road. And as we mentioned, some friendly reminders. If you're stranded on the highway, contact the Highway Emergency Response Operator. They have a number of services. 210-732-HERO. Bring it to our inbound times. Things look pretty good right now. We've got a lot of humidity this morning when you step outside. Also, a little bit of that haze from some of that Saharan dust that's working its way in here. 81 is what it feels like in town. 86 at Stinson. Uh, we've got a couple of sprinkly showers up in northern portions of the hill country. Maybe one or two of them hanging around today. 90 high temperature. A shower or two. Not very likely, though. Just a mention of it. And temperatures will start to creep up over the next few days, getting well, back up to normal readings by the end of the week and a lot of humidity. So heat index. Yep, that's something to deal with today. Thank you, guys. Everybody, thanks for watching. Yeah, have an awesome Monday and we'll see you back here at nine.